What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be getting into 1 Chronicles chapter 14. Hallelujah. And in the last couple chapters, we've been seeing the rise of David as king. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for, for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And so here in chapter 14, we're going to see a continuation of the rise of David as king. Now Hiram, the king of Tyre, and we also see Hiram uh, in other scriptures when it comes to Solomon. Hiram assisted in building the temple of God. And Hiram was also, well, let me just read us. Uh, a verse or two and then get to this now Hiram the king of Tyre sent messengers to David with cedar trees masons and carpenters to build a house for him and so well let me read one more verse and David and David realized that Yahuwah had established him as king over Israel and that his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel this is when David truly realized that he was king of Israel. He came from being a shepherd boy, taking care of the flock, to being king of Israel through God. Hallelujah. But Hiram, I'll say it, meant, it mentions here masons, masons and carpenters. Hiram as well as, as well as Solomon are somewhat I, I don't I don't even, I don't even want to say the origins of Freemasonry because the origins go back further and I'll speak about that in a second but a lot of people look at Hiram and Solomon as a lot of the origins of Freemasonry and you know masonry is a craft you know building but You know, it gets, gets deeper than that. I mean, as far as, far as Freemasonry, you know, it's, it's much deeper than that. And it's occultic. And it all goes back to Nimrod. Nimrod, the I believe, the great-grandson of Noah. The one who built the Tower of Babel. Let me break it down. So Nimrod, once... If you go back to the Tower of Bible, once the the languages were confounded and the people were scattered, people went out into all the world, forming the different cultures with different languages. And so they named their gods after Nimrod. That's where Baal comes from. That's where Moloch comes from. That's where even Dagon comes from. That's, that's where a lot of these other gods from these other nations come from it all goes back to Nimrod but the people were scattered the languages were changed and but they're all they're all, they're, they're all worshiping the same guy Nimrod as a god the sun god and so cultures throughout time from all the way back then until now, worship the sun god and Freemasonry is satanic. 
It's occultic. You can research for yourself Albert Pike. And you know what? I might pull something up. Let me pull it up right now. Something about Albert Pike, who was a 33rd, 33rd degree Freemason. Uh, and once you get to the those higher levels, see see the, the the lower level Masons don't know that they're serving the devil. But once you get up to the higher levels, specifically thirty three, people. Uh, that's that's when when you're introduced to. One second, I'm trying to trying to type this in. It's hard typing this on his phone. So I cracked up. But once you get up to the, to the higher levels in Freemasonry, you're introduced to the idea and the truth that their God is Lucifer. And they, these are the people that control the world. It's, you know, Freemasonry, you know, I'll say, now I got a cup uh, pulling up on me. But he actually reversed, and this is probably just just a distraction. And matter of fact, since I started started these, these Bible studies again, yeah, just distraction. Since I started these Bible studies again, there's been a cop sitting outside my house every time I get up in the morning. And they just pass each other. A van pulled over here, dumping some stuff in this trash can. Cop pulled by. It's about to pull, pull by me right now. Pulled by him, stop for a second. Stop for a second. And, uh,. Just gonna sit there. But I'm just doing a Bible study. I'm just serving the Lord. It's Freemasonry. Speaking about Freemasonry. I don't think that's a coincidence. Anyway, trying to disrupt, probably trying to disrupt uh, my word here on Freemasonry. Again, back to the word. Uh, Hiram, king of Tyre, the builder, and Solomon, uh... Masons look look <clears throat> look back to them as like pillars of Freemasonry, but it all goes back to Nimrod, and I just told you about Nimrod how he Nimrod became the gods of all these other nations, of all the nations, uh, Baal, Molech, all, all these other gods. They, they all go back to Nimrod, and and so people today still serve the same dude. Still serve Nimrod. Still serve Satan. Satan isn't Nimrod, but they serve Satan through Nimrod. And if we go to the book of Revelation, it says, uh, Revelation chapter 9 says, uh, mentions these locust creatures coming out of the bottom, bottomless pit. And they had a king over them, Apoll Apollyon, or Abaddon in Hebrew. Apollyon, that's Nimrod. He's coming back as the Antichrist. There's another scripture that says 
the beast comes out of the bottomless pit. That's that beast that comes out of the bottomless pit, Apollyon, Nimrod. And so, like I said, many lower level masons don't know, don't really know what they're into, but they're still involved in wickedness. Not even by association, but because of some of the, some of the things they do. Oh, uh, and I know this personally based on the harassment I deal with. But once you get up to the thirty third degree, oh, uh, that's that's when they introduce that the God is Lucifer, that Lucifer is light, this and that. And so let me uh read. A little bit of what we have here. Albert Pike. This is August 15th, 1871. And it's going to be difficult for me to read this. Let me try to flip my phone. I'm going to try to read some of this real quick. This is Albert, Albert Pike's letter. It says to, to Mazzini. And the title is Illuminati Plan for the Three World, World Wars. August 15th, 1871. The following is a letter, that's, letter that speculation claimed that Albert Pike wrote to Giuseppe Mazzini in 1871 regarding a conspiracy involving three wor world wars. And th this is the world wars that happened that they were, that, that were planned in, a, in, a, in an attempt to take over the world. Pike wrote the letter to... Giuseppe Mazzini or the Pike letter to Giuseppe Mazzini was on display in the British Museum Library of London until 1977. This letter has been claimed by many internet sites to reside in the British Li Library of London which d denies that the letter exists. It says uh, Giuseppe Mazzini was an Italian revolutionary leader in the mid-1800s as well as the director of the, the Illuminati. Albert Pike, historical Masonic figure, was a 33rd degree Freemason, occultist, grand master, and creator of the su southern jurisdiction of the Ma Masonic Scottish Rite Order. Following are apparently extracts from the letter showing how the three world wars would be planned for many generations. And so, quote, the First World War must be brought about in order to, to, to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The, the, the divergences caused by the agent tour or agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to, to, form, uh, to foment this war. At the end of the war, com communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in, in order to weaken religions. And we see that in our world today. And this is written back in the 1800s. The Second World War must be fomented, taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed, which happened in the Second World War. So that Nazism is, is destroyed, and that the and that the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. What happened right after the Second World War? Israel was recreate, recreated as a nation in the land of Palestine. They had these things planned out. These are. You know, the Bible says Satan is the god of, this, god of this world, and he controls the governments. He controls this Illuminati who, you know, controls the world. And they make the wars. They have different stuff happen. And although it was them that instituted the state of Israel, it was God's plan. It was God who did it. God had them do it in order to fulfill his prophecies. So one more time, this part. The war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that, that political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must be strong enough in order that we balance Christendom. 
which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm, until the time that they would need Christendom, Christianity, to use Christianity for the final social cataclysm. And I, I see that starting to happen right now in ways because they're turn, turning people against Christians for, you know, you know, you know, different things. The Third World War, which is the war spoken about in, you know, there are, right now we're seeing the wars and rumors of wars, but Jesus said nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That's the Third World War. That's exactly what that is. The Third World War must be foment, or fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the political political Zionist Israel and the and the leaders of the of the Islamic world and we're seeing that happen right now the war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism the state of Israel mutually destroy each other meanwhile the other nations once more divided on this issue will be constrained to fight to the point of co complete physical, moral, spiritual, and e economical exhaustion. We will unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, in which in, in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Basically, the results of atheism and you know no god and this is almost done it says then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries to defend themselves against a world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with christianity which is not true we know whose deistic spirits will, will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an, for an ideal, but with, without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. Brought finally out into the public view. This, manifest, this manifestation will result... From the general reactionary movement, which will follow the, the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both con conquered and exterminated at the same time. These are their plans. You know, they're in the shadows right now. They're, in, they're hiding in the darkness right now. But everything that's dark, everything in darkness is going to come to light. They won't come out and say, oh yeah, we serve Lucifer. They, they won't do that right now because they know everybody's going to be against them. But the time is soon coming when this third world war happens, which is the beginning of the tribulation time, and then they're going to introduce it into, into the public. The true light, which isn't the true light, but they're going to say the true light, this is Lucifer. They're going to deceive the world. The beast deceives the world. Satan deceives the world. And we can't be any part of it. But God just led me to get into that. And, and you know, there's Satanists. There's Satanists. And basically, as far as the Nimrod thing, as far as the Nimrod thing, um, Satan wants to be like, be like God. So basically, he's the father, Nimrod is the son. Nimrod is the Antichrist, the savior of the world. But he's not really. And we know that. But people are going to be deceived into believing he's the savior. When he comes onto the scene. In the form of an individual that is alive and in public right now. I believe Jared Kushner. And so, let's get back to this word. God just led me to get into that for the study.
I wasn't expecting it, but you know, I uh, well, I did, I did feel like God was gonna lead me into speaking about Freemasonry based based on Hiram and Masons being mentioned, but I didn't expect to go to Albert Pike, Albert Pike's letter and read all that. But you know, it's important to know. It's very important information to know. You know, they they've planned out the first two world wars. They're planning out the third, and uh, they plan to introduce their light of the world, Lucifer. As their God. But anyway. From the beginning of chapter 14. Now Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David with cedar trees. Masons and carpenters. To build a house for him. And David realized that Yahuwah had established him as king over Israel. And that his kingdom was highly exalted. For the sake of his people Israel. Then David took more wives at Jerusalem. And David became the father of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children born to him in Jerusalem. Shammua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Eliphet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Belida, and Alephalet. And these are the children born to him in Jerusalem. I don't know if he had any others or not. Uh, that's not mentioned in the scripture, so let me actually count these. One, two, three, four, five. Thirteen children here. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David. And David heard of it and went out against them. Now the Philistines had come out and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? And will you give them in my, into my hand? Then Yahuwah said to him, Go up, I will give them into your hand. So they came up to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. And David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand, like the breakthrough of waters. Therefore they named that place Baal Perazim, which means Master of Breakthrough. They abandoned their gods there. So David gave the order and they were burned with fire. They're, they're idols. They're gods. The Philistines made yet another raid in the valley. David inquired again of God and God said to him, You shall not go up after them. Circle around behind them and come at them in front of the balsam trees. And so David... He could have just had faith in God and just went out and went out against them. Even though he didn't know the plans of the enemy and God had different plans. We need to always inquire of God and, you know, this one thing I, I believe God has gifted, gifted me with or provided me with is allowing me to hear his voice. I'll ask God something and I'll get an answer. And I praise him for it. I praise God. Because I don't know where I'd be without his, well, his guidance with the, with the Holy Spirit especially. But also without his word. I don't know where I'd be. But David, you know, I love seeing this in the scripture. That David inquired of God. And God answered him. And David is basically the only person in the Old Testament that mentioned the Holy Spirit. In one of the Psalms he says, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me after he sinned. David had the Holy Spirit. It's just nowadays, there, there are more that have it nowadays that or have him nowadays than there were back then. But unfortunately, most of the people today don't take advantage of that. They don't realize their power in the Holy Spirit, the power that they have with the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people that have the Holy Spirit and just they're dormant vessels. A lot of people aren't truly seeking God, asking God, working for God, letting God work through them more specifically. And if you have the Holy Spirit, we need to 
everyone who who has the Holy Spirit needs to truly seek God, truly search, truly search Him, truly ask Him for gifts, and and just ask Him, ask God, and He'll He'll tell you. And and you know, not everybody hears from the from the Holy Spirit like uh, as some other people do. I'll say, like I said, I. I'll ask God, and I'll hear from Him, not audibly, but I'll hear it in my spirit. I'll hear an answer. I'll get an answer from God. I'll hear it. And, you know, one of the first times that I really heard the Holy Spirit like that, I didn't even ask anything. I was working a job, and uh, there was a new girl there and the girl just seemed seemed like she was trying to get close to me and this is like a maybe a year or two into me really coming to faith and truly serving god uh she kept seeing kept like trying to be close to me kind of flirting with me and stuff and then one time i was around her i was at work one time i was around her and that i just heard in my spirit she's a witch and i was like i was like lord uh uh, like I, I kind of try to confirm it with them. I was like, Lord, uh, is she a witch? I heard, she's a witch. And I didn't even know, I didn't even know this girl's name. And so I looked at, looked up this girl on Facebook. And what do you know? We're in the crystals, playing with tarot cards and the pictures on Facebook. But I had no idea about this girl. But the Holy Spirit said, she's a witch. And I looked her up. And she was, and she was trying to in infiltrate me. She was trying to, you know, get close to me, trying to, who knows. But God told me that I didn't even know her name, and that I looked on a schedule and saw her name, and then I looked her, looked her up on Facebook. And what do you know? <laughs> I did hear from God. God was right, and you know He He speaks to me, and I praise Him, and uh, He's given me. I, I believe He's given me great understanding in the Scriptures, especially the prophecies. And I thank God. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you. Praise you, Lord. Because I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it at all. I, I don't deserve God to speak to me. I don't, I don't deserve God to re reveal to me things in His Word. I, I don't deserve anything. But God, I just don't get it. I just praise God, and we're almost done with this study. Let me finish it out. The Philistines made yet another raid in the valley. David inquired again of God, and God said to him, you shall not go up after them. Circle around behind them and come come at them in front of the balsam trees. It shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the top of the balsam trees. Then you shall go out to battle. For God will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. And that's amazing. That's truly amazing. And God said, when you hear the sound of marching at the top of the balsam trees, at the top of the trees... You should go out to battle because God has gone before you. That was the angels going before him against the Philistines. When you hear the top, the sound of marching on top of the trees. Whew, whew, that is amazing, man. That's so amazing. Wow. Then, When you hear the sound of marching on the tops of the balsam trees, then you shall go out to battle. For God will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. David just did just as God has, had commanded him. And they struck down the army of the Philistines from Gibeon even as far as Gezer. Then the fame of David went out into all the lands. And Yahuwah brought the fear of him on all the nations. Oh man. God exalted David. Hallelujah. The Bible said David was a man after God's own heart. And he wasn't perfect. None of us are. But he was a man after God's own heart. 
And we need to make sure we're people after God's own heart as well. We need to make sure we're serving God with all our heart. We need to make sure we have that same zeal for God that David did. That same trust in God that David did. That same humility. That same heart. So let's serve God with all our heart, all our strength, and all our soul. Let's seek Him for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that. And you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And once once you do, you, you will receive the Holy Spirit. You will have God leading you. You will hear from God. Maybe not like everybody else, not, not, not like some people. And I'm not saying I'm special. I just praise God that I, that I hear him. That I, I, I can ask him something and he'll give me an answer. It's, I underestimate it. I truly underestimate it. And I just want to serve God with all my heart and do all his will in all things. And we all need to do the same. We all need to be born again. De die to our old life and be born again into new life in Christ. Walking in righteousness. So let's live for God. Let's repent and truly serve Him. Let's be humble and blameless. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.